matrix is simply a rectangular grid where numbers are arranged in rows and columns. For example, if a matrix has two rows and three columns, it means there are two horizontal lines of numbers, and each line contains three numbers. A square matrix is a special type of matrix where the number of rows is the same as the number of columns. If a matrix has two rows and two columns, it is a square matrix because it has an equal number of rows and columns. Now, there is another special type of matrix called a vector. If a matrix has just one row, it is called a row vector. If it has just one column, it is called a column vector. In high school math, we are often given two matrices or a matrix and a vector. We are then asked to multiply them using some tedious operations and find the final result, which is either another matrix or a vector. However, we are usually taught to do these calculations blindly without actually understanding why matrix multiplication works the way it does or what they actually represent in real-world problems, and that is why we start hating math. But what if matrix multiplication had a hidden meaning that most students never realize? Let us find it out. Quickly tell me what will be the value of 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2. Yes, right, it will be 8. Now what will be the value of 4 times 1 plus 5 times 2? Yes, right again, it will be 14. Now, let's take a step back and see what just happened. We took the number 1 and multiplied it by 2. Then, we took the number 2 and multiplied it by 3. Finally, we added both results together to get 8. We did the same thing again. We took the number 1, multiplied it by 4, took the number 2, multiplied it by 5, and added both results to get 14. Now, if we write this in a structured way, it looks like this. We started with the numbers 1 and 2, which we can think of as a vector. Then, we had a set of four numbers arranged in a grid, 2, 3, 4, and 5. These four numbers were applied to our original numbers, giving us a new set of numbers, 8 and 14. But wait, this is exactly what happens when we multiply a matrix with a vector. So what does this really mean? It means that our original vector, which was just the numbers 1 and 2, got transformed into a new vector, 8 and 14. This is not just some random arithmetic. This is a mathematical operation that is actually changing the vector. In geometry, such a transformation can represent things like rotation, where the vector turns to a new direction, or shearing, where the vector stretches or shrinks, like a piece of rubber being pulled in this direction. So, matrix multiplication with a vector is not just about following boring rules, it is about taking an input, or a vector, and transforming it into a new output, or another vector, in a systematic way. Now we will try to understand matrix multiplication. To do that, quickly tell me what will be the value of 2 times 8 minus 1 times 14. Yes, right, it will be 2. Now, what will be the value of minus 3 times 8 plus 2 times 14? Yes, right again, it will be 4. So, observe carefully, like we did before. We can rewrite these expressions nicely using matrix and a vector to get another vector like this, isn't it? We again performed a transformation on this vector using this matrix to get another vector 2 and 4. Now you might ask, so what? What's the big deal here? Here comes the magic. If you remembered, this 8 and 14 is not a random vector that we choose, but it was actually the result of our first transformation. Remember how we started with the vector 1 and 2, then used a matrix to transform it into 8 and 14? Now, we just took that transformed vector and applied another transformation using a different matrix. And we got a new vector, 2 and 4. So what just happened? We applied two transformations, one after another. The first matrix transformed 1 and 2 into 8 and 14. Then, 
the second matrix transformed 8 and 14 into 2 and 4. But instead of doing these transformations one at a time, what if we could combine both transformations into a single step? That would mean finding one single matrix that directly transforms 1 and 2 into 2 and 4, skipping the middle step. So in this matrix form, substitute this vector 8 and 14 as this multiplication of matrix and a vector to get this. This way, you can see that we can multiply these two matrices together to create a new matrix that does the entire transformation in just one step. But what will be that matrix? Look carefully. We can rewrite this 8 using this equation, right? Similarly, we can rewrite this 14 using this equation. So let us expand it one by one. This will become 2 times 2 times 1 plus 2 times 3 times 2 plus minus 1 times 4 times 1 plus minus 1 times 5 times 2. Now combine these two terms together to get this, then combine these two terms together to get this. Noise. Now we can do the same thing here. Substitute 8 and 14 as these, then expand to get this. Then take the like terms together to get this. So now we have expressed the final vector 2 and 4 in terms of the initial vector 1 and 2. And we can rewrite the same in terms of multiplication of a matrix and a vector like this. And there we go. Look at these values, and then look at the values in these two matrices. Doesn't it look like the same operation that we are taught in matrix multiplication? We multiply this row with this column to get this value, then this row with this column to get this, then second row with this first column to get this, and then finally this with this to get this. The final value of this new matrix will be equal to this. That's exactly what matrix multiplication does. It finds the direct transformation without needing intermediate steps. Before we go, you might have learned that matrix A times B is not the same as matrix B times A. And now I guess you know why. Can you let me know the reason for the same in the comments? If you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, consider becoming a Patreon as it helps me create more awesome content for you. Link is in the description. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.